Hello, fellow human. Welcome back to another Dang to Lars slash Am I the A Hole? Question of the day Have your parents ever tried to prevent you to do something important before in your life? On to the first story, posted by you slash Aida Engagement. Am I the A Hole for telling my daughter to cancel her marriage? I have a daughter, 27 years old, who was with her boyfriend for 7 years and they got engaged not long ago. Just a small party, not many guests. She always talks to me about how she loved him, how he always listened to her, and he was made for her. I have agreed with her since I found I equals to him to be a good natured man. He was kind and humble, and always respectful to our family. We've met his parents for dinner twice or thrice, and they hit me as little sexes, asking questions to my wife like, I don't know why you're working. Isn't that the husband's job? It's the mother's job to be taking care of the children. Now that they wanted me to take it more serious, they planned a marriage. Anyways, we have been planning about the marriage, and one day, her boyfriend comes to me and says that his parents want to talk to me. I was going to call my daughter too, but he said that she wasn't allowed. I went with him, and his parents start talking with me about dowry. I was confused and said that there were no dowry and in 2020, who even gives dowry? But boyfriend and his parents start lecturing me about how necessary it was and how my daughter would be a stay-at-home wife. My daughter has told me that she wants to continue her dream, so I don't know what this is. Anyways, they told me that I should give it a thought and told me not to tell my daughter for the time being. However, I immediately told my daughter about it and she started crying, saying that she didn't know that her boyfriend was so sexist. She asked me what she could do now, and I told her that she wasn't being forced and could cancel her marriage if she didn't want it. Well, that is exactly what happened, and now her boyfriend and his parents are calling me, saying that I took away the love of his life, etc. On top of that, some of her friends, some were bridesmaids, said that I was the a-hole for bringing up what would have been a healthy marriage but it's my daughter's happiness that matters. Am I the a-hole? Well, definitely not the a-hole. You saved your daughter from a life of hell. Sorry that she had to go through that though. On to the second story. Am I the a-hole for asking my husband to turn down his dream job for my career? I'm going to be vague for privacy reasons, sorry. I'm 33, female. I'm the breadwinner of our household. I have multiple, highly specialized degrees for a niche industry. I make over 200k, with the potential to get into the 600 to a millions range. My company has not been hit that badly by COVID, so most of us have kept our jobs, but we are held to strict standards. My husband, 36 years old male, has a board degree slash work experience. He quit his job right before COVID hit, hoping for a better job in the meantime, and I was supportive. He spent a ton of time applying to various jobs and finally landed an interview at Organization X. This is his dream job in almost every imaginable way. I cannot be detailed. However, it's paying about 65k a year, which would be fine except this job directly puts my job stability at risk. My company and this organizations are adversarial at best. My field is extremely secretive and if clients discovered my spouse was working for a competitor, I would be permanently tamed. I wouldn't be able to get a job in the industry forever. I know this sounds like an exaggeration, but I promise you, it absolutely is not. It'd be like if I worked in protecting the privacy of celebrities and he worked for TMZ. If he tapped my car, got into my work devices, he could use that to advance his career. And any trust I have in this field will be gone. Even if I trusted my husband not to do that, my clients and company don't. Worse, because my background is so specialized, this is the only field I can work in. I ask him to drop from consideration for this job, since if he got it, we'd lose my income. 65k a year cannot support us in this city. Plus, he does not have to work for this organization. Even if the job market is awful right now, his background gives him access to a wide range of jobs, but I only have this one, niche field. He was extremely angry and said that I was selfish and only cared about money. 
I told him that if he wanted to go back to school for an advanced degree or just be unemployed for a while, I would support him, but taking this job isn't possible. He continued to process behind my back and got the offer. He wants to accept it because he says his career needs to take priority and that I wasn't being a supportive wife. I feel so betrayed and I've contacted all relevant higher ups in my company to inform them. I notified them as soon as he got interview because it's better coming from my email than from a background check. I told him he could decline the offer with me watching him physically decline it or he could accept the offer and move out immediately. I would pay for him to stay two weeks at the hotel and we would begin divorce proceedings. My company is willing to take care of all my legal fees. I feel so ducking awful. I still love him. I moved decisively because this was the best way to cut my losses, but it still hurts. He called me hurtless and cold. It's true that I was prioritizing my career over his, but it felt like the only option at the time. Not the a-hole. Some people saying that you've decided your job is more important than your husband. They are ignoring the fact that he seems to have decided a job offer is more important than your entire career. On to the third story by North Rollaways 2386. Am I the a-hole for FaceTiming my wife in the store? I, 42 male, got a call from my wife, 40 female, when I was getting off work and she asked me to pick her up some pads from the store. I asked her to send me a text with a picture of the ones that she uses to make sure I got the right kind. I get to Walgreens and I cannot find the kind that she texted me, so I FaceTimed her in the pad aisle and was showing her the section where the brand is to see if I could find another kind. About 30 seconds in, a woman comes up to me and tells me I'm being inappropriate and she was going to report me. Mind you, my wife is on video with me this entire time. I tell my wife to text me a backup pad that I could get for her and end the call. Right as my wife is texting me, a man, store manager, and a female clerk come up to me with the woman behind them and he asks what I am doing and that he got a complaint that I was behaving inappropriately. I explained that I was there to buy pads for my wife and couldn't find her brand. I told him that since I didn't use it, I called her on FaceTime. The woman then starts shouting that I was taking pictures of her and I was lying. I showed the manager the text from my wife and I told him that I just wanted to get my wife her pants and leave. The manager and the woman went up to the front of the store and the whole time she is screeching to him and that he needs to call the police and have me arrested for being a terrible guy. The clerk stayed behind and asked if she could help me find what I needed. I agreed. I showed her the box my wife texted me and they were out. She then said that this other pad in the same brand would work just as well. I texted my wife a picture of the pad the clerk picked out and that she said they were fine. I paid for the pads and left. And when I got to the car, I cried. A grown butt man crying in his car. I've never felt more embarrassed and humiliated in my life. When I told my wife what happened, she went pale and hasn't stopped apologizing to me. Was I the ale for FaceTiming? I don't think I was doing anything wrong. But is there some unspoken rule about the pad aisle I don't know about? Well, this one is super easy, not the a-hole. In fact, you are the opposite of an a-hole because you shop for your woman's needs. Moving on to the fourth story. Am I the a-hole for telling my girlfriend that being depressed is not an excuse for being lazy? I, 29, have always supported my girlfriend, 23. We have been together for four years now and lived together for one. She always had anxiety as well as depression where some months are worse than others. I've supported her through all of this and understand it is very hard for her. In January, she lost her job due to the current world circumstances. By March, she hit a low point with not eating much, crying, irritability, typical traits of depression. I have comforted her as much as possible and taken care of everything. However, at the beginning of June, I was allowed back to work and since the house has fallen to shambles, I am too tried by the time I come home to do anything, even cook. Most nights, we order takeout and on the rare occasion, she makes food. The floor aren't being washed, hoovering isn't being done, laundry is a mountain and dishes are everywhere. 
I try to keep on top of it, but with work, it is almost impossible. She is home all day. She lies in the bed till late afternoon, watches Netflix, eats bowls of cereal, and naps, and that's about it. I've tried to gently coax her to do more, and she says she will get to it, but never does. I finally snapped and told her I was sick of her doing nothing all day and leaving the housework to me. That if she's here and I'm working, she needs to be pulling her weight. She got upset and said that she wants to, but she can never find the motivation. That she is tired all the time. I said I understood she was depressed, but it isn't an excuse to do nothing and be lazy. No one likes housework, but I won't take any more excuses about it. She needs to start doing it or leave. Next day, I come home to a clean house and a note from her saying that she was sorry and going to be stay with her mother. Her mom helped her clean before they left. I tried calling, but she wouldn't pick up. When I rang the house, her mother answered and had a lot to say. She was furious, telling me about how she is struggling and I'm making her worse, that I should be supporting her, not ignoring that she is in a bad place, and so on. I was told my girlfriend had been crying all day in her bedroom, and I feel awful. I never wanted to hurt her. I just napped. I tried to get her mother to give my girlfriend the phone, but she wouldn't speak to me. It feels like a lose-lose situation. On the one hand, I know depression results in a lack of motivation and cleanliness, and on the other, I cannot stand to see our home in such chaos. I've never had depression, so I cannot say for sure how bad it truly is. That is why I find it more difficult to 100% empathize. Am I the a-hole for telling her depression isn't an excuse? Extra info: She has a therapist and talks regularly with them. Her depression is worse since losing her job. Usually, she is quite clean and tidy. We don't usually have this issue. She's looking for a job despite depression, etc. I have enough money to support us both in the meantime. Ooh, this one is tough. But nah, I feel for both you and her. It's not easy dealing with someone who has depression, just as it's not easy for that person to be dealing with the depression. The next story we have here is the update of the previous one. Ultimately, I realized that the majority of the blame was mine. I never ever should have called her lazy because that isn't what she is. I lashed out and I shouldn't have. She stayed at her mother's for a few days, and we eventually met up to talk. I told her how it just got too much for me, but it was no excuse for lashing out, and I apologized. And she also apologized, not that she needed to. And we talked for a long while about how we can make our relationship work. I expressed my concerns over her therapist, who's very against anything other than talking therapy. She agreed that he didn't seem to really have her best interests at heart. And she is currently looking for someone new. For now, I suggested she stops looking for work. She got a lot of rejections, and I could see it was upsetting her more. I just felt like we should take a step back from that, and I want her to focus a little more on herself. She was unsure as she felt bad, and that I would be working for both of us. But I assured her it is fine. I make enough to support us both quite comfortably. I also suggested maybe she could volunteer at some point just to get her out and get some more stuff on her resume. I'm no therapist, so these were just suggestions. But it had seemed to have taken some of the pressure off her, which is all I wanted. We agreed that being in the apartment all day alone and in bed is not good for her. So we came up with a plan that she do an exercise video three times a week. It's only 10 minute one, just so she's doing something. She has found she likes doing them. They make her feel a bit better after, and she started something called Yin Yoga now too. To help me, she has one chore a day to do. I don't care what it is; it could be dishes or it could be just putting the laundry in the hamper. This rule has at least gotten her out of the bed for part of the day, and she's found that once she starts, she sometimes ends up doing more than one thing. I make sure to show my appreciation for whatever she has done, no matter how small it was. We have set out that every Sunday we will have a deep cleaning day where we get everything done for the week. This has been surprisingly successful. We make it fun and just mess around while still getting things done. It makes the week a lot more manageable when we only have light chores to keep on top of. 
She is trying more, and I'm also working on being more supportive about her depression. I'm researching it more and learning ways I can help her because it is a part of her. We're both putting more effort in and communicating a lot better. I hope we keep making progress because I do love her very much and want us to work. Ooh, it's so nice when these things have a nice happy ending. Good job on working on your issues and communicating properly. One big heart for you. On to the final story by Calm Demand 5746. Am I the a-hole for throwing my sister out of my house after she bullied me? My sister is a train wreck. She needed a place to stay and have a large enough home for an extra person. She has no job or income. I told her she has a few months to get her crap together and leave. I give her about 100 bucks a week to keep my house clean so she has some cash. I give my sister her 100 bucks and she said I owed her more. I was confused. She said that she did other work for me. I asked her what more did she do. She said she walks my dog in the afternoon. I walk my dog every morning and evening, but she takes him with her on her afternoon walks. She said the going rate for dog walker is $25 per walk, so 5 multiplied by 25 bucks is equals to 125 bucks on top of the 100 bucks. Then she mentions that she put together a scrapbook of personal letters and papers. According to her and Etsy, that job was easily another 75 bucks. I told her I never gave her permission to do those things. Her argument is that those jobs fell under the umbrella of keeping the house clean and I was ripping her off. So I threw her out. The money is an issue. I have plenty of disposable income. I was disgusted how she came at me. Not the a-hole at all. I would have countered with a bill for food, rent and utilities. That's it for today, fellow humans. Thanks for watching. Be sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe. See you guys next time.